Oh. Still the middle of the night. Oh, I cannot sleep. <sighs> Turn on the light. That's better. It's kind of cold in here, honestly. Maybe I should light a fire. more like it. Man, this sonic screwdriver's handy. Hey guys, Tebow2 here. Back with another episode of TARDIS Tutorial. Uh, today I have a brand new feature, a really exciting feature. More of a gadget than anything really TARDIS related, except it, it kind of will be TARDIS related. Um, it's the sonic screwdriver, which, uh, in some times at least, is actually produced by the TARDIS, so that's something I'm going to add, which will kind of make this more uh, related to the TARDIS itself, but today's just about the screwdriver itself, so uh, yeah. So as you know, the sonic screwdriver has a bunch of functions in the show. Ignore the iron golem, he'll come into play later. Um, basically it uses, well, sound <laughs> to do a bunch of things, a very wide variety. Um, so we're going to start with, uh, just go in order of the features, because this thing has a lot of features, and it's perfectly possible to add more as you please, and I'll show you that later on. So for now, I just have a couple basic features. So let's begin with our first feature, and you do that by just putting it in your offhand, and it'll switch through the features. We have Creeper Ignition. So we take a Creeper, and this is exactly what it sounds like take the sonic and we just um, we need to be looking at the creeper if we're not so it makes the sound but nothing happens so we need to look at the creeper and right click and kaboom it instantly blows up when I look at it so yeah that's kind of the application of the screwdriver is you press F to switch through the functions and then right click to activate them so we can come up here and you could probably do it from just about any distance. I haven't really tested that, but at least not from a long distance. Well, let's see if this works. Hey, that's pretty awesome. It works from very long distances. It doesn't work in quite so long distances with uh, block radius related. It doesn't work with quite the same distance with block related features, but with the entity related features, um, it works from basically any distance. And again, you just need to be looking directly at the creeper. So yeah, um, you can probably guess by now that the screwdriver itself is obviously a, uh, what's this thing called? Spyglass. <laughs> New feature, I'm not really used to it, but, uh, I thought it kind of vaguely looks like a sonic screwdriver. Uh, kind of the textured brass look, or, well, copper, I guess, in reality, and then kind of the lens kind of replicating the emitter at the end. And then obviously when you right click, it kind of does a bit of a pointing look. I mean, yeah, it's kind of on your eye, but not a big deal. And then I guess this could be, I don't know, this isn't really obviously a thing with a sonic screwdriver, but uh, I don't know. And then obviously I got the sound, which uh, is kind of a buzzing. I might change it, but uh, I, I thought the bee buzzing sound was um, actually pretty fitting. Okay, so the second feature is Iron Golem Repair. So let's say that, well, we have this Iron Golem, and they're kind of robots, right? So it makes sense that the Sonic can kind of repair them and whatnot. So let's hurt this guy a bit. Could just release this zombie that's somehow ended up in my house, but I won't bother. Okay, so he is pretty damaged, as you can see, and it's cool that they added this little visual effect. Um, point being, we can use the Sonic to repair him, so we just right click. And as you can see, the cracks kind of slowly went away. And there you go, he's all better now. So, uh, yeah, and he does actually, it's not just a man, he does actually have his health go back. Or else he'd probably be dead by now from all that hitting. Um, so, yeah, we can just do this again. And see? You can just bring back his health just like that, and it'll repair the cracks as well. So that's very cool. So the next feature actually does have to do with this zombie that was in here. That was actually intentional. 
So we press F. Zombie infection heals. Because the sonic screwdriver, it can do some minor healing properties, so I figured why not? It can heal zombies, turn them into villagers again. So we just do that. I click. And, uh, don't run away from me. Oh, I heard it. There you go. Perfect. So now he's a villager again. Um, so the next feature, what is it? Shulker ceiling. I don't know. I just thought this sounded cool. So I'd imagine, like, the sonic screwdriver could, like, weld things shut, so I thought, a shulker. <laughs> I don't know why, but, you know, it's a regular shulker. Oh, Iron Golem's taking it upon himself to kill it, I guess. It's the shulker. Okay, what can you do with the shulker? Well, you can see, there's the shulker. It's got a creature inside, obviously. And, uh, yeah, it can open it, close its shell as it pleases. But one day, as a little application for fighting shulkers, we wanted to actually um, be able to, like, seal the shell shut so they can't get out, which sounds a little cruel, and it kind of is, but... Uh, I don't know, here we go. And it actually, what it does, is it replaces them with a regular shulker box, which is locked shut. Redstone lamp lighting, you saw this in the intro skit, but it's very simple. Lights up a redstone lamp. Now, I believe the fact that it stays lit, um, it's not so much a bug, but like, if you were to update the block at all, like placing something next to it, yeah, it turns off, because basically it's not supposed to stay lit like this. Yeah, I'm pretty kind of close to it. Like I said, the uh, the block-related functions do actually depend on distance, so I think you need to be within like three or four blocks in order to get it to work, but as you can see, because of that block updates thing, if I had like multiple next to each other and tried it, they would only stay on for a moment because they'd all kind of update each other and then turn back off. Okay, and finally we have a campfire lighting feature. Now these features don't really work in reverse, so like for the uh, campfire, for example, you can't unlight a campfire. So we go to the campfire lighting. So you can't like turn off the campfire. I don't know why I couldn't figure that out, but I couldn't. So you still have to use, I guess, a shovel to do that. I'm not sure if there's another way, but I know that's one way you can do it is with a shovel. Um, and then, yeah, but we can light it again very simply. So yeah, I think that's a cool feature. I do obviously wish that I could also have it turn off. I might be able to get that to work in the future, but uh, yeah, that's that's all those features. And then I have a couple more. This copper deoxidizing function. So you see we have this like oxidized copper from when you just leave regular copper um, outside. It'll just oxidize and end up turning green over time. And these are the three different uh, states for it. The Sonic has the deoxidizing function, and check that out. Made them all into regular copper again. Now obviously they're going to oxidize again. I didn't like wax them or anything. You'll have to do that yourself, but uh, there you go. And then the final two features are glass melting, which, you know, probably a misleading name because I'm not actually melting glass. Well, I'm melting sand into glass, more accurately. So, we activate this, there you go. Any glass within a three block radius is, well, any sand within a three block radius is turned to glass. So interesting, huh? Um, and then the final feature also relates to glass. This is glass shattering. So let's say we had either glass blocks or glass panes. Either one works. So let's just build a little wall of each of these. And let's just say that we activate the sonic and it shatters them all. So yeah, that is all the functions of the sonic for now. Um, I know people probably want it to do more redstone related stuff like uh, open iron doors. But uh, that's actually kind of a problem because uh, the iron doors, they have like the two halves. And so that caused problems when I was trying to test that out. But I'll work on it, and I'll also add a few more functions as time goes on. So anyway, how does this thing work? So here we are, and this is all the command blocks. Really, it's just these ones you got to worry about. All this is just uh, cycling for each of the different functions. So let's start at the beginning. So the first thing you want to do is open up your chat and do scoreboard, objectives, 
had Sonic, but then not only that, you also want it to not only add that, but also detect what it's detecting. So really, it could be any item that has a right-click function, really, because really what you're doing is Minecraft.used colon, and then really just anything that you can use with like right-click function, uh, this can detect. So it really works on any item. I gotta be Minecraft dot spyglass, I guess, but there you go. You just enter that and then press enter. And if I had done that, it would have probably said new objective created or something. Um, and basically now we have a scoreboard that you can't really see because I didn't put it on the sidebar, um, but that's okay. And really it just counts every time you use a spyglass. Um, so yeah, how do we make it actually like relate to the sonic screwdriver itself and not just any spyglass? Well, we'll get to that. So we have these two commands, detect usage and then reset score. So this basically has these two commands leading into this AND gate actually. Um, so we have execute if entity at a scores equals sonic equals one. So basically, when someone gets the score of Sonic is 1, which is basically just whenever they use a spyglass of any kind. But, in order to specify that it's the Sonic screwdriver in particular that they're using, we also have this command block that is just a basic uh, execute if their selected item is uh, the spyglass, except with the tag of display name text Sonic screwdriver. Basically, it's testing specifically for one called Sonic screwdriver, and if you're holding that, it'll work. Basically, what happens is, if you're holding the one called Sonic Screwdriver and you detect the usage, then basically we want these to turn off, therefore turning this on, and then scoreboard players reset at a scores equals Sonic equals one, Sonic. So it'll reset your score on that scoreboard when you use this. So yeah, um, so basically, your score basically is going to go up to 1 and then like immediately go back down to 0 basically when you use this. So what's next basically? Well I also added in this little precautionary thing. Uh, execute if entity at a scores equals sonic equals 2 dot dot meaning if it's 2 or more. Um, which is not supposed to be, obviously, because it goes to 1 and then resets, but if it somehow got to 2, if you, like, spam it really fast, then uh, scoreboard players reset at a Sonic. Anyway, cycle to the next function is basically what happens when you put it in your offhand, so how do we determine that? Well, this is just a basic command testing if it's in your offhand. Um, the spyglass is in that slot with the display name of Sonic Screwdriver. That's just basic TARDIS key type stuff. And then when it does that, you're going to want to execute at at a name equals Sonic Cycle. Run TP Sonic Cycle, uh, negative two on the X axis. And yeah, the Sonic Cycle is this new uh, armor stand I've put here. Um, basically just at the beginning of the cycle or whenever. Um, I guess I only labeled the first one, but that's okay. Um, and basically each of these corresponds to a different function. So yeah, just like any uses of my cycle system, you can expand this however far you want and just make sure it's all force loaded in because I didn't do that initially and it, it may cause some problems. Anyway, so yeah, now we move on to the actual functions themselves. So let's start here. This is actually just the sound. So execute if they have a sonic score of one, then you're going to uh, execute at the player who is holding the spyglass with the name Sonic Screwdriver, and you're going to run play sound entity dot b dot death ambient at that same at e who is holding the spyglass, which is the Sonic Screwdriver, um, at their coordinates with a volume, pitch, and minimum volume of one. Obviously, you can play around with the play sound, make the sound whatever you want, whatever pitch you want, blah, 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 blah. Just make sure it plays at the player with the Sonic in their hand. And then basically, I just did the main, same command again a moment later with a repeater, just to make it go a little longer, I guess. Okay, so on to the exciting part, the actual functions themselves. So here we have, for example, the Creeper Ignition, nicely labeled, unlike the other ones. Um, 
So yeah, when the armor stand basically cycles to this place, like we saw, what will it do? Well, it has this one, which basically just does slash say at E, who is holding the spyglass. Um, it, it'll actually say the name of that player. Um, apostrophe yes, that player's sonic screwdriver set to creeper ignition. So I thought that was a pretty cool function. So that's basically the same across the board, just change the message obviously. And then what's it doing with this command block? Well, this one is on needs redstone, so it only activates when the uh, pressure plate actually activates it. And as you can see, what does it do? Well, this is a similar command block that we used to the uh, Weeping Angel in that it's looking, if you're actually looking at the entity itself, so you can execute as at a selected item is the spyglass with the name Sonic Screwdriver with a score Sonic of 1, add at S, anchored eyes facing entity at E, type equals creeper, eyes anchored feet positioned, carrot 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 1, rotated as at S, positioned, carrot 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 negative 1, if entity at S, distance equals dot dot 0 dot 2, and that distance. Um, I believe in the Weeping Angel video I put a comment saying to change it to 1.4. That just means if the entity is within like your screen basically, um, but I want it to be smaller distance so that you have to actually look specifically at the entity itself in order for the uh, sonic to work on it. So I made that distance a lot smaller. And then if uh, that is found, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to run the command data merge Entity at E, type equals creeper, sort equals nearest, limit equals 1, fuse, colon, 0. And that, the fuse is basically, obviously, exactly what it sounds like, the fuse to make it blow up. So, just make it blow up the moment you uh, set your eyes on it with the sonic. So, yeah, what's the second function? Well, I, I kind of forgot, but uh, golem repair. There we go. So, what does this command block do? Well, exactly the same thing pretty much, except I did make this distance value a little higher since the golem's a little bigger. Um, and obviously you just change who it's uh, targeting to iron golem instead of creeper. And then you're affecting him, basically. You're run effect give to him as instant health 1-1. One, one. So yeah, basically it literally just gives him a health effect when you set the sonic on him. Um, What's next? Zombie infection healing. This is very, very similar, just with the zombie villager, and you're changing his data to conversion time, colon 15. So yeah, that's just a data merge entity. And then conversion time, colon 15, you can set this to really any number. Uh, 15 is just like really quick, and then you just set it to a lower number if you want it to be even quicker for the uh, villager to get healed, or if you want it to be slower. I don't really know what the default should be on that, but uh, it, it's definitely a lot quicker than the default because it only takes like a second. Uh, what is this? Shulker ceiling. So this one has three command blocks, I guess. So this one is uh, executing at the shulker within a distance of five, and then it's filling the exact same coordinates with a shulker box, and then you just add some parentheses, lock, colon, and then in uh, quotations you just put really any word um, this just means that it can only be opened by an item with this name and I just set it to one <laughs> just because I didn't really want any item to be able to open it unless someone was just crazy enough to name something one I guess and then replace air so basically just meaning if there's like air where the shulker sitting which there should be just given how shulkers work um, It'll then replace it with a locked shulker box, which only opens with an item called one. Um, and then we have two chain command blocks, which are chain, unconditional, always active. Not sure if they have to be conditional, but I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, uh, so this one is kind of the same, um, but it's chain and always active and have the arrows facing out of it. So, uh, yeah, we're basically going to do... Uh, I guess I still have that higher distance. Um, probably shouldn't, because it's smaller than the uh, Iron Golem. Anyway, um, run execute as at E, type equals Minecraft Shulker, limit equals 1, distance equals dot dot 5. Run effect give at S, 
invisibility one one true and true just means it hides the particles so yeah um it, it makes him invisible as he dies so that you don't just see a dying shulker um as you turn it or supposedly at least uh sealing it shut <laughs> um and then this next command block is just killing the shulker so uh this is a little bit complex so um run execute as the shulker um limit equals one distance equals dot dot five run kill at s so the shulker is the one running the command to kill itself basically that's how that works okay that one complex one's over okay redstone lamp lighting um this one's a matter of uh executing at the player with the sonic screwdriver spyglass thing in their uh hand with a score of one you're going to run fill just like three blocks around the player in every direction with a redstone lamp with lit equals true replacing a regular redstone lamp so yeah that's exactly what it sounds like if there's a normal redstone lamp which is not lit it'll replace it with the one that is um and here we go campfire lighting exactly the same pretty much command um you just head over here and do the exact same thing with campfire and you're replacing a unlit false campfire with one that has lit equals true very simple this one right here is three commands <laughs> let's see what it is copper deoxidizing okay i know why this is three commands so this one's pretty much exactly the same um pretty much uh so yeah within a radius of three blocks you're placing copper blocks in place of oxidized copper and then this is the same thing except with exposed copper and weathered copper and if you wanted that to work for like copper stairs and slabs you just do the same thing just replace uh this with like copper stairs and replace this with like exposed copper stairs and do that for all three states um so yeah a bit tedious which is why i didn't do it yet um and then what is this glass melting again same type of command you're just putting glass in place of sand and then this one should be glass shattering yes so this one is replacing air for glass panes so just and then uh yeah that doesn't actually like break it technically it just replaces it with air so i also had to make it do a play sound command so um run, executing at the player with the spyglass in their hand um you're going to run play sound minecraft block dot glass dot break ambient uh at that same player um with a score of sonic is one um at their coordinates with volume pitch and minimum volume of one basically just meaning you have to make it play the sound separately since it won't actually do that and then i basically just did the same command block for uh, actual glass blocks so it works for blocks or panes and I believe this is all I have for now so uh, yeah that one's just empty for now and then this one is just teleporting the cycler back to the beginning so yeah that is actually literally everything it's not amazingly complex once you kind of get the hang of what you're doing and then adding new functions uh, it, it really at this point is just whatever you want the sonic to do i guess um it isn't really too terribly difficult you can obviously like i said change blocks or um you can change uh entity data and whatnot and i'm sure there's other uses you could do with it really whatever you please i guess so uh yeah so yeah this has been my video on how to make the sonic screwdriver within vanilla minecraft um that is really all i have been tebo2 be sure to subscribe to follow my instagram tebo2yt to follow my twitter which is also tebo2yt and lastly to have a nice day goodbye